All righty, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode with Doc and Caveman. As always, you are here with Dr. Fantasy and the Fantasy Caveman. We are rolling through our NBA draft profiles. Today, we will be talking about Jalen Duran, 6'11", 250-pound freshman from Memphis. Has a 7'5 wingspan. Don't always mention that, but feels like that's necessary in this case. Uh, as a freshman, he averaged 12 points, 8.1 rebounds, and 2.1 blocks. Caveman, what strengths do you have down for Duran? All right. Oh, I mean, look, we got to start by talking about his body. I mean, not, 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 not. You would want to start there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I mean, come on. We got, I mean, you mentioned just 6'11", 7'5", wingspan. 250 pounds, and he's 18. It's not like this is like a like a four year, or even like three year. Co- this is like he's 18, and he's 6'11", 250. Like I don't know what this guy was eating for breakfast every morning. It's like some like Wheaties with there's some pr- special powder put in the Wheaties or something. I do uh, like my steroid Wheaties every morning. I mean that it, that's what, but uh, I mean, and with that, I mean, and with that, you gotta talk about uh his rim his rim protection. I mean, it's at an elite level. You mentioned two two point one blocks. He had ten games where he had more where he had three or more blocks. So I mean, you're gonna I mean. He knows how to he knows how to use that size the the block and alter shots. Uh, and then the other thing, before I kick it over, I want to met like for his size, you would think like they teams would be able to pick on him, especially on the perimeter. I mean, he's six eleven, two fifty. How well could he possibly move on the perimeter? But he. He, I wouldn't say it's a, it's, I don't want to know if I would necessarily call it a strength, but it kind of is when you consider being who he is, he's not going to be a liability on the, on the defending on the perimeter, which uh, that's going to keep him, that's going to help him stay on the floor uh, early on while he develops everything else. It's just the fact that, you know, teams aren't going to be able to, to pick on, to pick on him when it, when it when he's forced to go on the perimeter. Yeah, I mean, most of his strengths are gonna lie defensively. He's mm-hmm. arguably the best big man defender in this class. Mm-hmm. You mentioned I would definitely call a strength of his his movement and the way he's able to defend on the perimeter. We're gonna talk about Mark Williams in a few episodes here, and he is the complete opposite where he has no ability to do that, but Jalen Duran is similar to what we saw a little bit from Evan Mobley defensively last year, who was able to defend a lot on the perimeter and be pretty versatile. I think he has similar upside. I won't say as much. Mobley has a little more athleticism and or and he's a little more fluid, I would say, moving. But I definitely think Duran has a lot of defensive versatility upside, and he's not going to just be a guy who's protecting the rim so I think that's a big positive um I do think he's got a big strength in his ability to finish uh we saw him finish quite a few lobs as a freshman at Memphis and if he is set up with the appropriate playmaker that could be an absolutely huge strength for him in transition especially with his speed so I think that's a big plus the other thing, it's probably not a highlight of his game, but he did show a decent ability to make uh, the second pass. So he's not a primary ball handler or anything crazy like that, but he's a pretty decent passer for his size. And yeah. if he doesn't have a, a good shot in the post, he uh, had good vision to kick it back out to a guy that was open on the perimeter. So I think that's a big strength for him. And he did show, I, I'm not going to call it a strength or a weakness, so I guess I'll just mention it now when we're almost to weaknesses. But uh, he did shoot a little bit in the mid-range. Yeah. And he was okay. It, it wasn't good. It wasn't yeah, bad. So. so 
but I think that's at least promising. You mentioned he's only 18, so maybe you see him later in his career as he develops develop more of a mid-range game and a better jumper, and I think that's possible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that, that's what I, I had that had that down as well, just playmaking and shooting potential. I mean, I don't, I don't think. First of all, I don't think he's ever going to develop a three pointer. I don't know people are talking. That's a little extreme. Yeah, it's a little extreme because, like, you know, I hear, I, I, I heard a lot of people talking about it since he basically has a mid range jumper already, like. But like he's the type of guy I I don't want my foot I don't want my six eleven, two hundred and fifty pound center roaming on the perimeter. Like, well, I think a lot of coaches disagree now. <laughs> I mean, but like I mean, I don't. Nah, 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 man. Like he's he's a he's a you you he should be at the basket finishing those the oops and the and the putbacks and like. Nah, man, I, don't, I, 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 I'm, I like him having a little mid ranger just because they have to respect him a little bit, but I never want him venturing out past mid mid range at all. Okay. What weaknesses do you have for him? <sighs> all right, uh, I mean, going along with what we just talked about with uh, finishing, I mean, he can finish, he can catch oops, putbacks, but as far as you know, the guard throwing him the ball down in the post. That's that's not him, man. He's not that guy. Uh, I mean, he's showing like he's showing like I saw like a him do it a couple of times, you know, trying to make a move and score in the post. But it's definitely if it's in if it's truly in there somewhere, it's deeply buried, and it's gonna take a while for him to develop that ability to just score in the post like that. That's kind of. Where that's kind of where I'm at with that, and then the other, other thing, because there's a couple of things here, um, going along with his rim, pro- his rim protection, while, while he is a great rim protector, it does get him into some foul trouble, mm-hmm. and that is a little concerning for me, uh, because, I think I, he's gonna, if he doesn't reel that in, he's he's really gonna see limited time on the court because they're not coaches especially you know especially with uh at this age them could just coming in i mean they're they're not you don't give you don't get a lot of leeway like if you pick up like two fouls you, they're not gonna trust a, a guy like this at this point to stay in like he's gonna have to reel in that foul trouble if he's gonna play consistent minutes at the nba level yeah, I mean, you touched on a lot of the things that I wanted to. Going back to his post-up ability, um, he, I just think he's not overly creative offensively. He doesn't have any moves in the post. He's not going to create his own shot. He's not going to – that's just <laughs> not what his offensive strength is right now. Uh, you mentioned the turno- or the fouls, which also – just in the same kind of world, he had a lot of turnovers as oh, well yeah. for a big man. So mm-hmm. that's something he's going to have to cut down on. And then he has absolutely no ability right now to dribble the basketball. And I think that's <laughs> part of the reason why he's not very strong in the post. Uh, he just he has no handles right now. And I don't know if he's going to develop any, but it's definitely a big concern right now. So oh, yeah. I think that sums up the biggest weaknesses for me. So we'll go to ideal fits. I, I only put two down. Uh, I think the best one still, and I actually really like his upside. I think he's really intriguing. And I said Mark Williams earlier, and I, I do like Mark Williams, but I think that Jalen Duran offers more upside and potential and a little more versatility. So I do like that, and I think he has quite a bit of upside for where I see him going, which is kind of like the late lottery right now. I kind of like him in that spot. I think it's mm-hmm. a, a good spot for him. I could, I would honestly, I have one of the ideal fits for him being the Spurs, and honestly, that wouldn't make me upset. 
because I think that they have a big hole at the um, down in the post right now. We talk about all these young guards and wing players that they have, but they really don't have a long-term solution in the post right now. So I actually wouldn't mind him going there. But I do think the most exciting one would be to watching him play with LaMelo. I mean, yeah, I mean that's yeah, a, I, their I, biggest need, and that would be – they pick in that range twice – so I think if he fell to that range, that would be an easy pick if I was the Hornets front office. I yeah, I mean I know I'd love the I'd love a uh, fit with the Hornets and Lamelo. That makes it's one of those that makes entirely too much sense, and then that's that's why it probably won't happen. Uh, <laughs> honestly, because I'm I I'm I, I I'm weary that I think the Knicks for some reason are gonna draft a center. I think the Knicks are going to either get Duran or Mark uh, Mark Williams, who we'll talk about uh, in a future episode. But but like yeah, if he gets by uh, Knicks, I definitely think Char- there's no way Charlotte passes on him. Uh, they don't pass on him at 13. If we're being honest, I don't unless Mark Williams is still there, and that it kind of depends on who the Hornets want at that spot because you can't go wrong with either one if we're being honest uh but then yeah that's kind of and then other than that if like a guy if he were to that's the thing like i wouldn't be mad either if the spurs uh the spurs took him at nine but the uh yeah i think that hornets is the fit uh and then maybe maybe the hawks uh with with Trey Young and then he, uh, uh, and so, yeah, but Hornets is the fit. Yeah, I don't really have many doubts about that, honestly, <laughs> in my mind. Uh, who do you have for an NBA comparison? Okay, I mean, I threw a couple. The one, the one I really like, and it's kind of, it's kind of, because you look at what people are saying about Durant and that Mark Williams, who we, brought up like 10 times even though it's not his episode uh he doesn't even need his own anymore <laughs> he doesn't even, we've done him already basically uh but i have uh mitchell robinson down uh i kind of that's which is why i'd be, be stupid if the knicks went and drew because that, that doesn't just doesn't make any sense you have another mitchell robinson on your team uh, and then the other the other name I had down was Andre Drummond. Uh, especially if I think he can have that kind of impact defensively and just grabbing rebounds. Uh, even if if he never develops, I think that's his upside. If he never develops any sort of offensive game, because Drummond doesn't really have that much of an offensive game, for being honest. So he does not. Um, probably. My favorite that I came up with was Serge Ibaka, just because Serge does have a little bit of a mid-range game. He's been a good shot blocker throughout the course of his career, and I don't know, I think that's just a realistic one for him. You know, not a superstar, not even a star, just a top-level role player on some really good teams. So uh, I could see him having that kind of career. I think that's fairly reasonable. The one that I read that I thought was interesting was a guy playing in the NBA Finals right now, which is uh, Robert Williams of the Celtics. I'm yeah. pretty intrigued by that comparison. Um, you know, and then you have to talk about some upper. I mean, not that those are bad comparisons, too. I had Drummond down. You have some lob specialists like DeAndre Jordan who you could throw into the mix as well especially with him being so young at his age already. You know, you got to throw in the old Dwight Howard ring too, um, (laughs) which is a little extreme, but I saw a few people do that. So why not? I'll throw it out there. I don't think that one's wonderful. I like Abaka and Robert Williams personally as my favorite too. So I like it. I mean, we don't have, there was the, do we have, do you, do we have like a upper end, like, do we see elite big man? Do we do we just not see the elite big man potential in him? I don't yeah. know if I can see elite just because I think offensively he's too limited. As much as he has 
you know, the potential to develop a jumper. I mean, his lack and if he develops in the post, then yeah, I could see it. But he's just so raw right now offensively. It would take some, you know, not to say it can't happen, but I think it would take some major leaps offensively for that to be a realistic possibility. Because defensively, I think he'll definitely have an impact, no doubt. He'll, he'll, he, he's a guy, he's going to win, he's going to, he's going to be on some all defensive teams, and he's going to, he might win, he might win a defensive player of the year or two award to in his career. Dang, that's pretty extreme. I mean, I mean, like, like I said, it all comes down to, for me, I think, I think if they choose to develop his offensive game, you know, that, that that I'm not too concerned about, if we're being honest. I want him. I really feel this foul, this foul trouble is my. I, this has been the most concerned I've been with anybody in recent memory when it comes to foul. When it comes to foul trouble, I really think this is gonna hinder his ability to stay on the court. And I I love him defensively to the point where, like I said, defensive player of the year potential. And I think his defense is going to keep him on, on on the court. So that's that's the thing. He has if he can if he can stay on the court, I think we're going to see some really good things from him. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, well, I think that's it for Jalen Duran. Next episode, we have Caveman's favorite prospect coming up. So make sure you tune in for that, and we'll see you then.